All right, well, this may be another exciting trip around the pattern, but... Uh, I know. I have faith in the landing gear. There you go. All right. Hey, welcome back, Eastwing, everybody. Welcome back, check my boys up. and girls. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> RC Malavish enthusiasts all across the globe. We are back at Arizona Electric Fest. And it's another... And it's another windy one. Look at that. Oof. Anyway, so All we're right. Wish me luck. Barrett Hawkhouse. Good luck. <laughs> this is a Vought V143. So, uh, very interesting, uh, very interesting design. Um, kind of notorious in that it was, it's often been called the aircraft that the Japanese Zero was patterned after, and that's really quite hilarious and erroneous, but in any event, it is what it is. But this is the Vought V143. And again, Barrett likes to bring out some of the model airplanes. So, this one is definitely one of those. It's an attractive plane. Um, and I suppose you could look and say, well, there are some some lines. But to me, if it was the progenitor to anything, I would say it would be the the Hayabusa or something. I mean, it, it, I can't see zero in this plane, but I could see uh, Hayabusa, perhaps. But even then, I don't think the Japanese use this really for anything. Vought, B-143. Hey, so Barrett, what year would this have been? Like 37, 38, something 37. like? 37, okay. And I guess, it, what, was it built Basically, was this built to, to fulfill a contract of some sort, or just a... Yeah, well, um, or was we'll get to that out in the briefing. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. Absolutely. Whoa! Whoa. Uh, oh, nice! I found you! <laughs> Where's your spotter? Yeah. <laughs> if you ain't, you ain't trading paint, you ain't racing. He didn't bump you, he rubbed you. There you go. There you, is flying. There you go. How'd you get that cougar? I trapped it. Look at that. Alright. Well, this thing it really flies effortless. This is another one on a, what, a single four cell? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a stiff breeze in this plane. This flies really, really good. Like I said, one thing about Barrett is that you're not going to see too many common aircraft <laughs> coming out of his good clay works. You're going to see all sorts of seldom seen models. And it's kind of interesting because Passing low. You wonder why this one's never really been modeled or isn't more popular because it's a really an attractive airplane. The battle to see who can get lower. <laughs> and apparently a very good flying airplane. Ooh, nice slow roll. I like it. It's one of my few airplanes that actually is comfortable with aerobatics. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. But then again, most of my airplanes tend to be airplanes that wouldn't be doing aerobatics anyway. Yeah, you wouldn't be doing many, you know, stall turns with the RB1 Conestoga. But this thing just really flies super good. Man. James, did we fly that backwards, 
Landing. It's all about how you actually touch the earth. Correct. All the machinations above the ground are meaning meaningless until you actually touch. Like that. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. Oh, that right main landing gear hates me now. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Magoo, you've done it again. I'll tell you what. Oh. All right, so this is a Vought V143. Now, it looks like a fighter. Probably should have been a fighter, but it never became a fighter. So it never got a designation like XP such and such. This was... Um, not a lot, not a lot of history to say about the airplane because it never entered service. But long story short, in the 1930s, Vought wanted to break into fighter design. They had been building observation aircraft for the Navy and biplanes yeah. and stuff, and they've been doing okay. But they wanted a fighter. Sure, um, sure. Their design bureau bought a design from Northrop for an oh. airplane called the Northrop M3A, which oh. was broadly similar to this. It was a little shorter and had a, a tail that was straight at the end, uh, a different tail. Okay. And Northrop's prototype disappeared on its first flight. Oh, uh, The pilot uh -oh. crashed out in the sea somewhere yeah. and nobody ever found him. Wow. So Northrop sold the, the design to Vought. Vought okay. bought it. Okay. And it turned out to be a very dangerous airplane in the yaw stability. Oh, really? Probably, okay. Probably mostly because the tail was just too close to the wing. Oh. And so, Vought, Vought bought it. They found out for themselves that this was not really a very stable airplane. Sure. So they extended the fuselage a bit and they redesigned the tail. Okay. And if you look at this airplane, oh, yeah. this airplane uses what came to be known as the Vought tail. Sure. So the sweep back and forward on uh, the front end and yeah. back end is pretty much the same. Yeah. Rounded. And the pitch stabilizer is pretty much the same. This is a tail that would appear again with the Vindicator bomber, sure. the Kingfisher, and of course the Corsair. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now, very recognizable, absolutely. Now, they, they felt that these problems would rectify the performance of the airplane. It didn't really. The oh. Air Force, or the, the Army Air Corps, when deciding between this thing and the Curtis P-36, they went with the P-36. Oh, that was its competition, okay. Curtis right. went down, um, Vought, I should say, went down to Argentina and attempted to sell the airplane to the Argentinians oh. against competition from the Curtis. Uh -huh. The Curtis folks, they let it be known to the Argentinians that the V-143, the Vought plane, had an actual emergency parachute back here oh, for spin wow. recovery. In case it got into a spin it couldn't recover from. Right. And the Argentinians heard that and they decided to get the... The P wow, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So, to try and make something of their money back, Kurt, uh, Vought, there I go again, <laughs> Vought sold the airplane. Yeah. The, the, only, the only V-143, they sold it to the Japanese. Yep. And in the nationalist press, xenophobic press of the time, it became popular to when the Zero's presence became known. Sure. And in the post-war, um, wave of historians, it became popular to accuse the V-143 of, or the, accuse the Japanese of stealing the design for the right, V-143. Right, right. When the in Zero. reality, they just simply purchased it from Vought. Yeah, and honestly, the Japanese probably found the same problems that Vought had right. and wanted nothing to do with it. I, I, I'd heard an article, or an interesting, I watched an interesting program where they talked about that, and the Japanese would often buy aircraft just to use as a, a yardstick mm -hmm. to see, are we doing the right thing? You know. Not to copy, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. The only two areas that I can think of might have influenced the Zero. Yeah. I mean, a radial engine is a radial engine. <laughs> right. But the, the fact that the uh, landing gear retracts inward. Uh huh. You know, coming okay. Off of the A5M, which is a fixed gear fighter. Sure. Maybe they, maybe they, without being able to study the 143's landing gear, I can't say. Right. Also, the Vought tail I mentioned. Right. If you elongate the base. Yep. You've almost got a Japanese zero. Correct. Yosuke. Correct. Yeah, very, very, uh, very distinctive. Now, if because of those two things you want to say the Japanese copied this thing, I say look again. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. There's, there's nothing else about the wing. No. The no. The, Gorgeous airplane. Uh, hey, so uh, a real quick inquiring minds are going to want to know before we wrap this up. Mm -hmm. What's under the cowl and what's what the battery power? Well, it uses that power 25 outrunner. Okay. 
Power 25. Of. It uses four cell power. Yep. I've noticed similar to the real airplane, perhaps, this thing turns really has a has a tendency to just whip around when I turn it huh. in the sky. Yeah. And I would bet you anything that if I got this thing into a spin situation, you're done. It would probably be <laughs> just as difficult to get out of as it was for the real airplane. Yeah, I bet. I might be encounter without realizing it. I might be encountering problems that the real thing. Oh uh, yeah. But for yeah. my purposes, just racetrack pattern. Yep. I get nice performance. I get. Uh, it rolls easily. It turns nice and sharp. Sure does. I haven't had any problems with it. And this this E flight landing gear. It's the old spring style landing gear, and yeah. it just it takes a it takes a pounding. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Barrett. Once again, you brought us a beautiful plane. Thanks for the uh, walk around. Hey, uh, uh, 40 what 40 amp BSC? Oh, this thing is probably. This is 65 amp. 65 amp, and I mean, it doesn't necessarily need to be that much. It's just what I had around. Absolutely, and and the size of the prop. What is it? A 12 inch? A 12... 14 inch. Four... Whoa! 14 inch APC prop. Okay. I had a lot of drag to get over with the cowling and the engine. Oh here, yeah, so you know what? You're right. I wanted to make sure I had a lot of clearance around the fuselage. Yeah, absolutely. And well, the Power 25 doesn't mind at all. No. Well, thank you, Barrett, very, very much, brother. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We will catch up with Barrett, and again, we are at the Arizona Electric Fest. This is the 2023 variety. The winds are are uh, coming down, so thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. More to come from Arizona Electric Fest. Cheers, everybody.